Scott Quigg. He looked powerful tonight. He looked powerful. His opponent. Um, Scott was saying that nobody's ever did this to him like how he did him. But I looked at the box wreck and Leo Santa Cruz killed him for a, a WBC youth title. And he's been stopped by Shinsuka Yamanaka, who I don't know much about. It was for the WBC bantamweight title. So, um, I don't know what Scott was talking about. The guy's got beaten before and inside the distance. And he's actually lost six fights. Jamoy's had success at European level against the likes of Ashley Sexton and Lee Haskins. You know, Lee Haskins, you know, um, a decent enough fighter. But surely his prime was years ago when he lost to Munyai years back, you know. And, um... Munya is somebody Scott could beat in his last defense. But, you know, Scott was saying that nobody would fight an opponent of Jamoye's class at such short notice. And I find it hard to believe he would say that. Jamoye is not the most awe-inspiring super bantamweight challenger I've seen. You know, let's just keep that real. Let's just keep that real, man. He came in at short notice... Obviously wasn't confident about his conditioning and he just, I don't know what his style is, but he just stood right in front of Quig. Throwing a lot of shots, gambling, trying to get Quig out of there. You know what I mean? You can't blame him, you know, if the conditioning ain't all that. Try and get an early chaos, see if you can get something to happen. But in saying that, you know, he threw some good shots, he threw some good shots. Jim Watt kept saying, why is he starting so early? He's just going to burn himself out. Well, what do you want him to do? Start taking... Punishment and then try to rally an attack. You know, it's ridiculous what Jim was saying. I, I don't want to contradict him because he's a boxer and I'm not. But obviously he was trying to gamble and, and get something rather than let it drag on and drag on. And his conditioning probably isn't at its best. Jim Watt was also under the impression that Jamoye wasn't hitting Scott Quigg. No, he was hitting Scott Quigg with regularity to the body and to the head. He was hitting him. He might not have had the power... To light him up like that, but he was hitting him. And Scott is a square on target. Can be hit. He's, he's hittable. He's very hittable. He hits hard, but he's hittable. He was letting the guy, you know, throw his bombs. He caught a lot of the shots as well on his elbows and forearms, Quig. You know, he blocked a lot of the shots and he was just letting the guy shoot his load and then he'd come back with his own. Which is um, a fair enough tactic at a certain level, but, you know, you start going up the ranges and that's just not going to work. You definitely need a bit more elusiveness and you have to be a bit more creative on setting up the angles for your shots that's just my opinion and um he's a big body puncher man he's a big body puncher and you can see the guy felt at least a couple of the body shots and um quick buried him with a left hand to the body i think in the third round he buried him buried him and the guy just um, wasn't in no condition to continue but you know the fight was the fight and, and it's over after Johnny Nelson asked Scott Quigg about the Leo Santa Cruz fight and he was very enthusiastic, he wants to fight. He was extra enthusiastic about the Carl Frampton fight. When Johnny Nelson asked him about Rigondeaux, then the uncomfortable laugh started. And he said, yeah, I'll fight him, I'll fight him. <laughs> um, Joe Gallagher, he sort of like he, he looked like he tried to do some damage limitation on what Quigg said. You know what I mean? He didn't want it to get out there that, yeah, Quigg is saying he wants to fight Rigondeaux. He says... Rigging now, you know, is risking your health, isn't it? And you have to pay, get paid out to ask to fight someone of that standard. You know? So, you know, these guys are committed not to fighting Rigging now. Santa Cruz, Frampton, and Quig. It's quite embarrassing, you know. It, I mean, every time it comes up, the more they look like paper champions, it's really quite embarrassing. I don't know. I don't know. If I was a professional athlete, I'd be finding that very uncomfortable, personally. You know, I mean, when that was happening to... Floyd Patterson back in the day when people kept questioning why Liston ain't getting his shot it, it got embarrassing for him so he just went in there and just um, played the sacrificial lamb took his lumps got knocked out by Liston twice but you know at least he can say man I didn't duck the guy I, 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 every time the question came up I just kept ducking I just fight him or vacate the belt but you know it is what it is they're committed not to fighting him so I, I do see it like this it doesn't matter what combination out of the three fighters we expect to see Quig in there with Frampton or Santa Cruz at least around the time or before summer 2015. They should be fighting each other 
And um, there should be no excuse. I mean, if you're going to commit not to fight in Rigondeaux, that's fair enough. I'm not going to keep beating that over the head and, oh, you're scared to fight in Rigondeaux. No, no, no. I'm done with that. We already know where you stand with that. You know? But if that's the case, them three at least have to make an attempt to fight each other, man. They, they have to at least do that. Because, you know, Scott can't keep fighting guys like that. I mean, last time he fought Munyai, Munyai was inactive, he was old, and, you know, he'd done what he had to do. It was impressive. And I think he could hurt a lot of fighters with his power. But, you know, we have to grade the opponents of when you're fighting. And we have to grade that to a degree. We can't just look over that. And um, Carl Frampton is a bit deluded in this, um, I'm the bigger draw, I need a whole lot more money than you, that's why the fight ain't being made. He's a bit deluded with that, because okay, look, you might be able to fill out an arena or a stadium, but resume wise, you guys are dead even. Trying to pick who's the better out of Frampton and Quig, and you can throw Santa Cruz in there. It's not worth doing. Neither of you are elite to be saying, I can negotiate and deserve more than the other. No, no, it's relatively even. It's relatively even. You have to separate yourself from the pack. And neither of you did that. These fights should be easy to negotiate. You're both young fighters. You'll all get paid well. And, you know, depending on how you perform, you'll be able to move on and keep ducking rigging there. So, um... That's where the super bantamweight division is right now.